Hello, thank you for taking the time to walk with me through a typical successful DNS request. In this quick guide, you will learn about the steps that happen behind the scenes when someone tries to reach or resolve a domain name. Let's say we open our browser like Microsoft Internet Explorer, Firefox, Opera, Safari and enter example.biz in the navigation bar. Within a couple of seconds, the page will appear on your computer screen. But how does your computer know how it gets to the IP address of example.biz? Well, first of all, it looks up whether example.biz is listed in your local hosts file. This is a file that exists on your computer and consists of a pair of a host name such as example.biz and its associated IP address. Usually this file is empty. Both developers and hackers sometimes modify this file to redirect a domain name to a different IP address. Of course, they have different intentions. A developer uses the file to simulate a call to another machine. A malicious user can try to collect sensitive data this way. Every time you visit a web page, its IP address is saved for a few hours on your local computer, so that you don't have to look up the IP address with every page call over and over again. This is called the local DNS cache. It also stores a timestamp so that your computer knows when it should do a fresh lookup of an IP address. This is called the TTL, the time to live. So if an IP address was previously cached on your computer, it would automatically resolve the domain to the IP address, the IP address of example.biz and no further action would be required. Right now, we assume that there is no entry in the local hosts file or the local DNS cache, as this is the first time that we connect to example.biz. So, what happens next? Your internet service provider has name servers for you. They're basically a gateway to the internet. The ISP name servers act as an agent to get an IP address. Before they look up a host name, they check if someone recently looked up the same domain name. They too have the timestamp, but many ISPs ignore our broadcasted timestamp and they have their own rules on how long this information will be cached. If the information was previously cached, once again it will resolve the domain to the IP address. If no information was cached, the ISP connects to the Internet's root servers. They will look at the ending of the domain name. In this case, it is .biz. And they will refer your question to the registry servers of .biz. The registry servers have the information of the name servers that are really responsible for the domain name. If they don't have the same ending as the domain name, they need to look up the IP address of the name servers first and they redelegate the request to the root servers. This delays the whole process by 40 to 200 milliseconds in average. So, it is important that if your domain name ends with .biz, your name servers should end with .biz as well. You might need to contact our support to make sure that we support your domain name ending. So next, the registry servers send you to one of the name servers in a random order. 
it doesn't have to start with um, always NS1. It could as also start with a different name server as in NS2. If a name server is unresponsive, the request goes back to the registry and it'll try another one. It is a recommended practice to have three name servers at geographically separated locations. Our name servers here at EasyOS Hosting are located in California, Texas and Germany. The name servers keep track of the actual IP address of a domain. Once this address changes, it is broadcasted to NS1, to NS2, and then replicated to NS3. You might wonder how the registry knows the correct name server. This information is stored by the registrar. That's why we usually ask you to update your name servers with them. Once you have updated the name servers, they will inform the registry servers. ISPs worldwide will eventually clear their DNS cache as the authoritative name servers of a domain name are also cached. That's why it can take up to 72 hours for DNS changes to propagate around the world. So, as you probably realize, there are quite a few steps just to look up a domain's IP address. And there are actually many more things that could go wrong as this is only a simplified scheme of what it takes to make a successful DNS request. <laughs>